Hello and welcome to today's tutorial, my name is Joseph. In today's video I'll be covering a extension of the um, dynamic door saving in game slash the doors and rooms tutorial I did the other week. In this tutorial I'm actually going to be tackling um, how to open a locked door with a switch and how to do it at extended range and stuff like that and how to make it a bit dynamic. Before I get into it, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone on the channel. You guys are all amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. Join the Discord if you're interested. And I shall get into the tutorial. So, I'm going to load it up and show you guys how it works. So once I load it up, you can see here I've got pretty much the same stuff as before. The only thing that should be different is, you can see I can't open this door anymore. And you'll see that it's still saving. If I go down to the switch though and click on it, you can see I can open and close the door. So you might be asking how am I actually achieving this? And the rest of the game pretty much saves except the switch because I haven't embedded the saving function into it. So the way that works, I'm actually controlling some of the va values in this door with this switch by using an extension. So let's get into seeing how that looks. First things first, I will highlight my switch is only 20 by 40 and I've centered it, so it's a bit different from the usual stuff I do. Okay, so let's get into the door element first. So you can see here, I've actually got a locked door now instead of just a door. And to be honest, I've cheated a little bit. Normally, when I would do this, if I was doing something a bit more, we'll call it more professional instead of dodgy, um, is I would attach a flag or a value to say, um, this is locked, and then another one to say, is there a key? So then that way I could say, manipulate that function, which then tags everything else down, or is there a key that the player can access tag all the way down? Um, again, I am going to highlight, very bad name there, that is the actual function to open and close the door, not just draw the door. Um, I've named it very poorly, I'll just highlight it, highlight, highlight that again. Um, the other aspect here is you'll see I'm missing the click function in my door, so I can't um, just click on the door to open it anymore. The way we access the door now is through the switch here. So I'm just going to run through each of the functions for the switch. So the first step here is I actually just set the um, switch tag to see if it's um, active or not, which is just your stock standard stuff. Um, the next two is I pull a X and Y value from um, my room. So if I load up my room, the Y and X values I'm pulling, so if you look down here, this is your coordinate value, are from about there. So I'm actually pulling this door's information. So I'm basically taking X, Y, and then I'm using a collision to check to see if I'm looking at the inner lock door. And if it is looking at the interlock door, I'm storing the ID inside here using this collision function. Then I will pass that over to the next step. Now let's go to the step event, and I'll kind of walk you guys through what I'm doing in here. So I've got a collision rectangle, and I've basically centered it on my switch. Because it's centered, I just have to account for all sides. And I've added 10 pixels to most sides except the back of the switch. And again, I'm just looking at if the player interacts with it. The next step is a pretty stock stand. I'm just looking at mouse position to make sure I'm clicking on the switch than anything else. And if I am, I proceed to a press and I change the switch tag to true or false based on its status. And then this is the part that gets a bit more interesting is I actually use the object ID in here and I drag through the doors information for, sta for the status of it if it's opened or closed. So if I do that, you can see here, I'm basically pulling this ID through into the switch using this dot value, which basically means object ID, call, door value, set value. So that's the idea there. So in theory, if I wanted to, I could attach it to a door that you could open normally, and you can attach it to a switch. So you can kind of have the best, uh, best of both worlds if you really wanted to for your game. The next thing I do is I just draw the sprite. So again, I've taken a slightly different approach to normally. I'm being a bit more lazy or more efficient. And you can see I've got a switch sprite and I've got the actual status in here. And the reason for that is false and true. And I'll just quickly write this out. False is equal to zero and true 
will be equal to 1. Which means if I've got a sprite index, index of 0, that's our starting sprite, or a sprite index of 1, which is my activated sprite. So you can see I'm just being a tad bit lazy. But that's pretty much that's um, all to this. So I'll have this up in the Google Drive so you guys can access it and play around with the source code. Nothing else has changed other than that. Nice, simple, easy tutorial for you guys. I will see you guys next time. Keep being awesome. And I will talk to you later. See you.